you ever found yourself wondering how to become more accurate in disc golf? Well, you're in luck because this is the way. Spin it. Hey DMD family, welcome back to another Discs MD video. Bunky here, and make sure you stick around to the end of this video. I have a little announcement that I wanna make, but let's get to our topic at hand. Today, we're gonna to talk about accuracy. Now, wait, wait, before you click off, just, just hear me out. I know this isn't very flashy or exciting, but the more I learn about this game and the more that I try to improve, the more that I am convinced that the key to success in disc golf is becoming accurate. And I say repeatedly on this channel that I am not a disc golf coach. Uh, I am, it is not my intention to try to coach you. Uh, it is my intention to, uh, to communicate with you the things that I am doing to improve my game. However, I am a softball coach. And there are things that are consistent across all sports. And, and I believe that this is one of them. So I teach my athletes that uh, in softball, we sacrifice speed for accuracy. And, and this is what I mean by that. You may be able to throw a ball 100 miles an hour, but if you can't hit a target, that throw is worthless. So I teach them to take a little bit off the speed and learn to hit the mitt. Then over time, as you get the accuracy ingrained in your mechanics, speed comes naturally. So in sports, accuracy is king. So how do we become accurate? Well, consistency breeds accuracy. And if you are consistent, you can become accurate. Now, listen to what I just said. If you are consistent, you can become accurate. Just because you're consistent doesn't mean you are accurate. I'm not saying that. But if you're not consistent, you can't become accurate. Accuracy requires me to be able to develop certain aspects of my form and my delivery. And if I'm not consistently performing those aspects, it's impossible for me to adequately adjust them. So I need to become consistent at what I do. How do I do that? Well, there's two ways to become consistent. One is practice, and two is formulating routines. Now, we'll deal with practice in a different video, not in this one. Today, we're going to sp uh, specifically focus on developing uh, routines. So we are all creatures of habit, right? By nature, we learn by repetition. And we typically gravitate towards doing certain activities the same way every time. I mean, think about those daily activities that you perform uh, day to day. Something as simple as I mean, tying your shoe. Now, I would venture to say that everybody listening to me right now, watching this video, has a specific way that you tie your shoe and you do it the same way every time. And you don't even have to think about it. But if you were to consciously change the way that you tied your shoes, it would feel odd and it would hinder the speed and effectiveness in which you tie your shoes. Now, no one here cares about how fast or effectively you, you tie your shoes and unless you're in a hurry to get somebody uh, to get somewhere very important. Uh, but I believe the same theory applies to disc golf. I would argue that uh, your throw is affected by everything that comes before the throw. So formulating good, consistent routines and performing them the same way every time will aid in your accuracy. I mean, watch any professional sport uh, and pay attention to what the athletes do when they play. A and I guarantee that you can identify specific athletes by their routines. Uh, pro disc golf is probably the biggest proponent of, of doing this. Uh, Pre-throw and pre-putt routines are 
everywhere in pro disc golf. And they are distinctive from player to player uh, because the players do the same thing every time they throw. Uh, think of Calvin Heimberg, right? And his empty handed putt routine or Chris Dickerson and his very deliberate pump routine. Uh, think of uh, all the, the, the myriad of, of um, tee box routines, right? They do the same thing the same way every single time. And there's a reason for that. And I think we need to pattern our play in the same way. So let's quickly go over what I plan to do to incorporate this into my game. All right, so here we are at our tee box, and just imagine a tee box here. Uh, the closest disc golf course is about 30 minutes for me. Sometimes, sometimes it's not convenient to, to pack up and, and go to a, a course of, uh, to video. So uh, let's just imagine that this is our tee box. So I equate a disc golf drive to a softball or baseball at bat. Uh, and I teach my athletes that uh, your at bat begins as you're walking from the dugout to home plate. So before you even get to the plate, you develop your routine. My daughter played collegiate level softball and her coaches uh, taught them the same thing. Get your mind right as you're walking to the plate. Uh, develop a saying or rehearse uh, your swing uh, mechanics uh, for points of focus that you need to focus on as you're swinging. Um, recite a, a, a line of a song in your head. Whatever it is, uh, do the same thing the same way every time you walk up to the plate. And once you reach the plate, as you're getting ready to step into the batter's box, have a routine for stepping into the batter's box. I mean, harping back again to uh, professional baseball, you'll see that when they step up to the box, different athletes do different things, but they do the same thing every time. That one athlete will do the same thing every time, whether it's adjusting his uh, batting gloves or tapping his feet with his bat or twirling his bat in front of, in front of him and staring at, staring at it, which a little insider tip when they're doing that, staring at the bat, they're saying something in their head, a catchphrase in their head to get them prepared. And then they step into the batter's box and they get into their stance and they use the stance, same stance every single time. It's the routine because all of this affects their swing. So I'm going to start incorporating this approach into my drives, get my mind set before I even step onto the tee box. So what I'm going to do is step, stand behind the tee box, visualize my shot, get my grip set, and then pick my gap from back here. Then when I step up onto the box, I have my grip, I have my mindset, I'm gonna practice my throw, like practicing a swing in baseball. Practice my throw. Okay, practice my throw. And then while I'm at the front of the tee box, I'm gonna pick see my gap that I picked and I'm going to set my feet where I want to end my throw right in front of the gap that I want to hit and this part is is kind of important have you ever wondered to yourself how do I more consistently and accurately hit my line in disc golf well this is one of the big keys to it once you get your feet set at the end of the of the tee box where you want to deliver your disc right and I'm going to get my disc set, my uh, release angle set, and my aim point set at the very end of the tee box, just to get a mental image of what I'm doing. Then I'm going to walk backwards on my line from the front of the tee box to the back of the tee box. So if I wanna hit this gap straight in front of me, and I wanna hit a flat shot toward that gap, I'm gonna walk straight back from that gap to the beginning of the tee box and run up on the line that I want my disc to follow. I should not be running straight up to the middle of the tee pad if I want to throw my disc over that tree to my right. If I want to do that, I need to set my feet up to the right and walk back on the line that I want my disc to travel. That creates accuracy. Now, you're not going to be accurate just because you do that, but that will definitely help you become more accurate. Once I'm done doing that, I will set my feet at the back of the box, 
get in my position and run through two points in my head that I need to remember during my throw. Curl the disc into the power pocket and lead with my elbow. Those are the two things that I'm working on right now. So I will mentally say them in my mind and then make my throw. This is the process that I'm gonna start incorporating on the tee box to make me more consistent, which will hopefully make me more accurate. Now let's move on to my approach. Now the routine for the approach is going to be a little more simplistic, but no less important. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my bag way away from my run up so I don't have to worry about, am I going to back into my bag or run up on my bag? Set it to the side, way out of your way. Uh, grab your mini marker, come up to your lie, mark it, either use the disc or put it back on top of my bag. Do that the same way every time, okay? Let me get my mini marker. Once that part is done, I'm gonna step up to my mini marker, place my foot in front of it, and then analyze what I wanna do. What gap do I wanna hit? What type of shot do I wanna throw? Is it a backhand? Is it a forehand? Is it a hyzer? Is it an anhyzer? Once I figure that out, if it's a standstill, I'm gonna practice my throw, right? And finish where I wanna release, visualize that release. If it's a run up, I'll back up however far that I want to back up, run up, and do my run up and my throw and finish where I want to release. Again, visualize the release. And once that's done, I make my throw. The same thing every time. Get consistent in your routine. Let's move on to putting. So I've thought that through this with my putting and I already have a routine pretty much in place, but I wanna make it more regimented. Um, so I thought through exactly what I did and I wanna draw out the steps of what feels comfortable to me. So I'll walk up to my bag and I'll take my putter and my mini out of my bag. And yes, I take my putter out with my left hand and my mini out with my right hand. It's just the way I automatically do it. So I'm gonna continue to do that. I'm gonna walk up to my lie. I'm gonna mark my lie and place my disc on top of my mini marker, like the pros do, but this is what I'm going to do. Right now, my disc is in my left hand. I transfer it to my right hand, set it on my hip, visualize the distance of the putt, and then set up my feet behind my marker. Transfer my disc to my left hand, aim, take a small breath, and then putt. And this is what I'm going to do every time. Now, I'm not saying this is what you have to do. I don't practice my putt. Again, uh, putting is very distinctive if you watch professional disc golf. And I've already mentioned Calvin Heimberg and Chris Dickerson, Eagle McMahon. They all have their um, own quirks and ways that they do things. We need to formulate our routine, especially putting. Putting is very form dependent, very routine dependent. So when you putt, formulate your routines and do them the same way every time. Well, everybody, there you have it. That's what I'm gonna do to start incorporating routines into my game. I mean, if you think about it, if the pros are doing something, they're doing it for a reason. They are meticulous about their play style. And a lot of them are now hiring mental game coaches to help them with these things. So this stuff is important to the pros. If you want to be successful in disc golf, it should be dis, uh, it should be important to us. Don't take it for granted and start spending time developing it. So now my announcement, as you know, uh, I'm part of the disc golf, uh, power disc golf Academy. Uh, and I love it. And I think it is the best and cheapest and fastest way for you to improve your game. And I will continue to be a part of the Power Disc Golf Academy as long as I can. Uh, as long as it is, it is around, I will be a part of it. Um, I, I, I know that David and Paul and now Simon are doing amazing things over there. However, I felt that I needed something more than that. So I have a goal to be uh, competing at a professional level by the time I am 55 years old. And I don't believe I can do that on my own with self-help instruction. 
which is what the Power Disc Golf Academy is, which is perfectly fine. But if I want to compete at the highest level, I needed one-on-one -on -one attention. So I hired a coach. I am now being coached by Josh from Overthrow Disc Golf. We've had one lesson so far, and I've had some interaction with him on how I'm practicing. So far, top-notch. I love it. I would recommend it to anybody who wants to compete. Uh, Josh is a great coach and a great guy. Uh, so what does that mean for you? Well, my improving my uh, game videos are now going to be a result of what I'm learning from Josh and how I'm incorporating what he is teaching me into my game. So be on the lookout for those. Well, I hope you found this informative. I hope you found this helpful and that you could use something that you saw today to help you improve your game. Uh, but until next time, enjoy the journey. Here's your verse of the day.